This is a raw bicycle frame. This is a head tube. This is a headset. In this video, we'll be installing this onto this. Okay, here's our head tube. This particular head tube was faced on a lathe before it was welded together. So in this case, now that it's welded, it is common practice to reface the head tube because of distortions that may have happened uh, during the welding process. Hiding back here. This here is a head tube reamer and facer handle. If you build more than one bike a year, chances are you own this. Uh, but if you don't, you can bring it to a bike shop and they will do the reaming and facing for you. A facer tool and a reamer gets installed on this end. Here's the facer. You probably remember this from the last video. And here is the reamer. This is still in the package. So I had to buy this because I needed a one inch reamer. That's 30.1 millimeters. And the head tube is a one inch head tube. Oh man, this stuff's really hard to get off. So you don't want to use a metal like like screwdriver to get this off for for pretty obvious reasons. Park tool 751.2 30.1 millimeters. really close. I think it makes it. Now if you buy one of these it has a quick release for the bottom here. I meant to one day build a nut quick release for here. I think you can buy them too but for now I'm just kind of like screwing this on and off by hand. Someone mentioned applying this stuff in the last facing video to the surface so that when I face it I can see what areas are done by how much ink is removed. You can see it's pretty new. Want to give it too much, just a little to get it started. It started to feel rough, so I put some more cutting fluid. This will now be my dedicated cutting fluid brush. Liberal amounts. We're getting there, getting really close. Okay, I think it's touching on the top surface now. You can see right here, it got it pretty good. But then on this side, you can see it still needs some attention. The amount we're facing off uh, isn't too critical if we go too far. I think that's enough. There is a quick release nut project in my future. Looks like we got a few little curly cues stuck on here, just to get those little guys off. No pressure, just a little slide. Let's see if we got them. Yeah! like basting a chicken. Get it all buttered up. All right, now for the bottom. Oh, I love the smell of this stuff. It smells so good. Now this is really sharp as you would expect. 
going to drop some cutting fluid on here. This is a brand new deburring tool. Very gently and smoothly. That wasn't smooth. Smoothly. You need to do that because when you're pressing the cup onto here, it's aluminum. And uh, if this is too sharp, it'll scrape right up and shave the cup. All right, we're ready to press some cups onto this thing. I don't know why I took it off the stand, because don't need it off the stand to press cups. <laughs> Origin 8 Pro Thread 1 inch threaded headset. Hmm. Get out of there. Anyway, these are the cups that need to be pressed on. Alright, we're just about ready to get this cup on. See, so you, you take the cup like this, you get yourself a nice hammer. And you line it up. Make sure you line it up well. The line up is really important. And then you just warm up a little. And then, did you think I was serious? Of course I wouldn't do that. You need a piece of wood actually, so you can, you know, so you don't mar up the top before you hit it. So you get yourself a piece of wood like this, you line it up. Get your hammer, and then you go. Two, three. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. This is a poor man's cup press. It's a threaded rod and an extended nut. It takes another extended nut for the top, and then I turn down some compression spacers. I will show you the old way I used to do things, some of the mistakes I've made in the past. This is one of those mistakes. So almost as bad as the hammer technique, it would be using a washer. So you take your cup, and then you would, for example, take a washer and stick it on here, threaded rod, and of course you would, you would then tighten it like so. Now the problem with this is the washer is putting pressure only on the outer edges of the cup, and this cup is aluminum, so it's going to distort the cup. There is a possibility this method has worked out for you, but you just don't want to take that chance. So here's an example of what could happen. This washer had way too much pressure on it. So here was another attempt from the past. I used a spacer. This spacer was made for a different size cup, and this is almost correct. But the problem with this is this spacer, it can do this, right? So it, it, there's a possibility it won't exert an even amount of force so what we're going to do is design a new press and I'll probably 3D print it. All right, I've got my reference parts here. I have the headset cup and the compression nut. Compression nut thing. Let's see, we need some washers in here. I'm going to have two washers in there. I think it's going to go a little something like this. Here to here maybe. So the reason I need to have knobs on the sides is because the printer isn't large enough and the printer can only really print this guy. Do I want it to extend down like that? I think I do. So the reason this needs to be a certain length is because right here it needs to fit uh, nice and snug. And the reason is you don't want it to, to be wobbling on the rod here. Here we are in Fusion 360, 40 tall overall. That rhymed. Right, it's looking like something now. That's gonna make 0.2 diameter larger. Okay, let's make our hex nut for reference. Uh, yeah, rectangle, no, polygon. <laughs> oh my God, it's late. So there it is, there's our hex nut. And my notes is 80. And let's move it down. 46, 9. Join, select. You can see with this shape here, I deviated away from the original design. I think this looks better. It's going to need to be a little beefier. Oh, A, B. That wasn't so bad.
So these are 20% infill, 50% infill, 100% infill. These have a, a really good amount of weight to them. So these are the press sleeves, uh, top and bottom. They're both identical. They go on the cup like this. It's a perfect fit. And this is the top handle. And the end knobs take a quarter to 20 screw to fasten. I wonder if this is too long. Uh oh. Huh. Got a little crack happening here. That's really too bad. This was a really long print. It's a nine hour print and you can see the layers separating right here. I had originally made it smaller because um, I didn't want the fit to be too loose. Didn't like that. <laughs> Let's get the other side on there. I hear cracking again. I think this calls for a redesign. We'll get this thing together, see how the rest fits. Now there's no split on this because the extrusion was this way. Okay, round two. I uh, designed and printed new parts. You can see the body is a little smaller than the old. So the old one was printed at 50% infill while the new one is at 40% infill. And the new one has longer end handles which are printed at 20% infill. And so that speeds up the printing process. And here's the old handle on the end, 20%. You can see that I've strengthened it by this bore hole for where the quarter 20 screw goes in. I've uh, made it smaller to increase the strength so there's more material now. The other thing I did on the body is it had a slot here for a plug to kind of uh, index this. And this actually weakened the handle and that's why it cracked right here. So on this one, it doesn't have a slot. I've instead made a little indexing uh, protrusion here and here's the slot for it. Okay, enough talk. Let's see about getting this nut pressed into here. I've got a little arrow to show which side goes up. So your right and your left parts uh, are different. Oh, you know what? I need to tap this. I do not want to crack this again. I need to test these registers. I think this one's okay. This one has a little uh, abnormality to it. All right. So a quick breakdown on how this is assembled. So this is the bottom part. And these nuts here are meant to be counter tightened. And then we have the, the bottom compression sleeve. And uh, on the bottom compression sleeve, I don't have a washer in here because I kind of want this to stick a little bit. We get the upper compression sleeve. I'm going to throw two washers in there and then the handle. So the handle part here is meant to slide and push this down. All right, we're just about ready here. Um, I actually hit this one more time with the burring tool. Uh, I decided not to be shy about it at all. I got some grease on my hat. All right, so this is the bottom. I know because there's, there's writing on here. Forgot to counter tighten that. All right, here goes nothing. <laughs> it's 
turning down here. Nope, still turning. I'm gonna have to hold this with a wrench, unfortunately. Might do something about that later. Almost there. Kind of a bummer this didn't, uh, doesn't hold. You know what else would work? And I'm gonna do it right now, just cause I'm, I'm so curious. I gave that nut a little tooth. So now I can uh, dig into here a little. Okay, let's finish this up. And get this right into here. It's back on here. So I've only got about one millimeter on the top and bottom. Oh yeah, it's working. Wait, no. <laughs> oh, I want this to work so badly. <laughs> it's still sliding on the bottom here. Oh well, it was worth a try. Okay, I think we're there. So I think what they did is they compressed and in doing so, they kind of squeezed around the, the thread. Interesting. Okay guys, that is a wrap. Thanks for sticking in there all the way to the end. So I googled up headset press out of curiosity and apparently you can get some pretty cheap ones for as low as $30 which just seems nuts to me. Although the compression sleeve for these don't look so great. Uh, at the very least, if you get a 3D printer, it is worth printing yourself up some custom sleeves. Anyway, overall, I'm pretty happy with how the press turned out. I might make some mods to it in the future to prevent the sliding at the bottom problem, but not bad for a first. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.